Who's ready to take back 2020? Come on, somebody, we can do this. No matter how you feel about 2020, no matter how you feel about COVID-19, how you feel about mask requirements, racial injustice, the election, or if Carol Baskins really killed her husband, we can take back 2020, okay? 2020 did not go as planned for most people in the world. I talked to people whose small business really struggled because of COVID-19, but on the other hand, I talked to people whose small business really thrived because of COVID-19. I talked to people who struggled mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually because of this year, and I also talked to people, myself included, who needed the busyness of life to be put on standstill in order to really find themselves again. Here's the deal. We have one more month of 2020. We got one more month, and, and this is what I want us to do. You aren't going to just survive, you're going to thrive. You aren't going to just survive, but you will thrive. We're gonna take back 2020 in this last month, and we are going to make the most of it. So the question I have for you today, how are you gonna end your 2020? How are you going to end it? John 10, 10 in the Passion Translation says this. It says, a thief only, a thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And who can relate to that this year? Who can relate to that? Maybe, maybe you didn't hit your goals that you set out at the beginning of this year. Maybe instead of losing 15 pounds, you gained the you gained the quarantine 15. You know you you gained more pounds. Instead of being more joyful, the news, family drama, family issues suck the joy right out of you. Maybe instead of getting engaged this year like you're hoping, you you ended a relationship. Maybe your marriage is still struggling. Maybe your finances didn't come together like you hoped. Maybe you're still dealing with an addictive behavior that you're hoping to kick this year. The enemy tried to steal, kill, and destroy. But, and there's always a big old but, but there's one more month left. This year is not over yet. And Jesus says this, and I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect. Life in this fullness until you, until you overflow. In Jesus, we can live a life, a life to the full, a, a life to the max. <clears throat> but here you go. Even in hard times, even in tough seasons, even in challenging times, a, a life, a full life in Jesus is not a life absent of struggle or pain or hardship or challenges. I would dare, dare to say a full life in Jesus is our hope in struggle and pain or hardship or challenges that we face. So here we go. We got one more month. And the enemy has been doing two a days all year long on you. But let's stop and let's take back 2020 and end this year strong. Pray with me and we're gonna dive right into this. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, we want more of you. We want you to be with us for the remainder of this year. And God, we ask for your absolute best where the enemy has tried to come and steal, kill, and destroy. We hold on to the promised victory that we have in you, Jesus. We say more of you, less of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, and just type an amen in the comments to let me know you are with me today. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to give you three ways to take back 2020, all right? Number one, take back your year with intentionality. Take back your year with intentionality. See, here we go. We know the holiday season is, um, is upon us, and, and even during the holiday seasons, depression rates are higher. People accumulate more debt during this time. If you have family, that can be a source of anxiety, or maybe, unfortunately, you don't have family, and that is a source of anxiety. But check this out. Check out Matthew 6.34 in the message paraphrase. It says, give your 
entire attention to what God is doing right now. I love that. What God is doing right now. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Let's do yourself a favor. Do yourself a favor. Give your entire attention to what God is doing today. Give your entire attention to what God is doing today because you can't change what happened yesterday and we have no clue what's going to happen tomorrow, but we have right now. See, God's job is outcome. Your job is obedience. God's job is outcome. Your job is obedience. So you must take back your year with living with intentionality. There must be intentionality, not just going through the motions, not just living life on autopilot, not just allowing media and news outlets to determine your day, to determine your joy, but with intentionality. The word intentional means done on purpose, done on purpose. See, because often we live our lives on autopilot. Often we live our lives really without any intentionality and it can cause unnecessary problems and stressors in our lives. For example, the other week we took Kingsley, Erin and I took Kingsley to her first soccer practice. We got, we got her signed up for some fun things because she just hangs out with me and Erin all day so she needs to see other people. But <laughs> we took her, took her to practice and on our way driving to the soccer practice, the, the being and the light of the low gas came up on, on the car, okay? But we were running kind of behind to get to practice and it was our first day, so we didn't want to be late. So, so he said, okay, well, I, won't, I won't forget. We'll get gas on the way back, right? After Kingsley's soccer practice and she was so super cute and we just couldn't handle the cuteness of her, of her soccer practice, we didn't even think about getting gas on our way back home, all right? So the next morning, the next morning, Aaron has a doctor's appointment to check on the baby. She goes out to start the car, and guess what? The car is out of gas. It doesn't start, it doesn't start at all. So now, if you have ever been to my house, I have a super steep driveway. I mean like super, super steep driveway, and our other car is parked behind our main car in this super steep driveway. Now Erin's freaking out, she's stressed out because this is a really important uh, appointment that she has, and she doesn't want to reschedule it, and so, I think to myself, okay, what are my options? The only thing I can do is I can hop in the other car and literally drive in the grass and drive up, up my steep driveway and get past the, the car. The thing about it though, there's a couple of trees and it was like this tight, my, 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 my way was this tight to get through. But guess what? I made it through that thing and I got the car on top of the driveway. It was crazy. And Erin got on her appointment on time, but here you go. That's called not living with, it, with intentionality. Intentionality would have been, hey, slowing down, getting gas, because you know there, because I knew there was other things to do. But when we don't live with, with, with intentionality, it can cause stressful and unnecessary things to happen in our lives. Who so can agree with that? When, when we just kind of allow things to happen. One thing I love about the gospel teachings of Jesus is that we see that Jesus lived on purpose. Everything he did was done on purpose. He lived with an intentionality. Now, I'm not saying Jesus just worked all the time and he was just busy all the time. See, work and busyness do not equal purpose, kind of like our world would like to tell you. You can work a lot and be busy all the time and still miss out on your purpose. But, but, he was intentional with his life. He was intentional with his life. For many of us, we are overcommitting our time. We're working beyond 40 hours a week, not using our vacation or personal time off, constantly on our phones, engaging in social media, reading news articles, and we're doing a bunch of stuff, but it's not done with intentional purpose. And that's why you could probably relate to this. That's why you can end your day feeling exhausted from the busyness of your day, but feel like you accomplished nothing. Have you ever been there? You're like, what did I do today? Well, I'm so tired, but what did I do? Did I really do anything meaningful today? 
See, to be Jesus followers, we must follow the example of Jesus and live with intentionality, done with purpose. Take back your year with intentionality by focusing on these four things. The first thing is this, family. You gotta focus on your family. And that could be your marriage, your kids. Maybe you're not married with kids, but you have really close friends or, or, or you know siblings, things like that. You gotta focus your intentionality on your family. That needs to be a value for you. Spend intentional time with your family. Check this out. Have sit down dinners that you actually have conversations at. You're not just so busy and this person's doing this and that person's eating over there. No, dinner time at the table, game nights, having date nights with their spouse. Aaron and I haven't been able to go out to dinner um, uh, because of everything that's kind of happening in the world, but we started doing, you're gonna joke us for this, but we started doing a puzzle date nights. And we, uh, so we make a puzzle and then we have a list of, of questions that we talk about through, throughout the date night. And I'm gonna tell you this, these date nights, man, they're first of all way cheaper, and which, hey man, come on. And they have been just as good, or, or if not better, than spending a bunch of money on a movie and a dinner date night. So spend intentional time with your family. The second one is this, is health. You got to focus on your physical and mental health. You have to focus on it. Take back your health with the last month of this year. I know the Christmas cookies are coming. Come on, somebody, just have one, not, not have one a day. That's good, right? You can eat that. Okay, just don't eat too many Christmas cookies, all right? A lot of times people say, at the beginning of the year, my New Year's resolution is gonna be, I'm gonna lose weight, I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna start running. No, you are not. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real. You ain't gonna start. If you ain't gonna start, Today, you ain't gonna start January 1st, I can, tell you, I can tell you that. See, the best time to start a healthy habit is right now. It's today, it's right now. The same goes with your mental health. Make an appointment to see a Christian counselor today. Reach out to one of our community group leaders and get someone in your corner today. Cut ties with toxic relationships today. Your mental health is important. Third thing is this, is your devotion, your time with God. So starting December 1st, this is when we wanna help you with, starting December 1st, we're gonna post an Advent Bible reading devotional plan on, on our social media outlets and in our email. So you can sign up for that. So I encourage you, follow along with us and be intentional with your time with God. And I, I guarantee, watch how different your life will be. Watch how different your life will be if you spend a little bit more time with God than you do on social media. Watch how different your life will be. And then the last one is this, work. Work is good, but work with proper boundaries. Work with proper boundaries. Now, I love work. You gotta work. You, if you don't work, you don't eat, the Bible tells us. But don't fall into the trap of working so much that you sacrifice time with your family, that you're sacrificing your emotional and mental health. Check out this story in John's Gospel. Jesus just heals hundreds of people, and he just he, he performs he's performing all these amazing miracles. And as he sits down with his disciples, he sees this large crowd coming towards him. Check this out. John six, starting verse five, says this: When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, "Where should we buy bread to? Where should we buy bread for these people to eat?" He asked this. I want you to get this. He asked this only to. To only to test them, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. I want you to get that. Jesus asked Philip this question to test him, but he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than a half year's wages to buy enough bread to feed these people, to, for people to have one bite. I want you to see what Philip does here, because I think we do this often. Jesus asks us a question, Philip responds with an excuse. Jesus, he just asked a question. Jesus has asked a question. And Philip came back with an excuse. The enemy of intentional living is excuses. The enemy of intentional living is excuses. I can't do this. I can't do that. Only those people can do that. I'm just overweight. I'm just a workaholic. I just always smoke my entire life. I'm just this. I'm just that. And Jesus is inviting you into his kingdom work and we respond with excuses. We respond with excuses to the invitation that Jesus lays before us, before us, even if Jesus did it for you, 
Like even if Jesus would have did all, taking care of all the things for you, we still would find excuses. I'm gonna step on some toes today. I'm stepping on some toes today, all right? Who in here has ever got a job you were praying for, and then week, two weeks, three weeks, you, you complain about the job that you were praying to get? Who in here ever got a house they wanted, then after some time, you only want a bigger house now? got married and then complains about the things that your spouse does, even though your spouse was doing those things before you got married. Who in here takes a blessing and turns it around to a burden? Jesus invites us to be intentional and live on purpose. Take back your year. Take back 2020 by resisting excuses. And, and in the words of Nike, just do it. Just do it. Just get, just spend time with your family. Just spend time get, working on your health and your mental health. Just spend, just do it. Get putting up proper work boundaries. Just do it. Just spend time with God. Don't make the excuses, oh, I'm this and I'm that. And I'm a college student and I'm, I'm a parent and I'm a mom and I'm a this and that and then third and blah, blah, blah. You're you and you have to take care of you. So just do it. Live intentional. Take back your year. Second way to take back your year is this. Take back, take back your year by living slow. Take back your year by living slow. Slow it down. Slow down. Stop being in such a rush. Jesus, if you look at the Gospels, was never in a hurry. He was never in a hurry. His slow, deliberate pace created room in his life for interruptions. And those interruptions have become some of the best stories we have in the Gospels. He was constantly interrupted by people, by problems, but he lived in a pace of life that allowed him to make room for people. We are such a fast pace, always in a rush culture. And that's honestly why I think some of the COVID stuff has bothered a lot of us because we can't be as fast paced as we normally are used to. Think about it. If you don't think about this, if you, if you do at least two of these things I'm about to list, maybe you're living in a rush. If you do at least two of these things, you always, always, always drive at least five, 10, 15 miles above the speed limit. You don't come to a complete stop at a stop sign. You just gotta roll your way through that thing. You text and drive, just don't do that. That's bad on so many levels, but you do it. You're on your phone while you're with other people. You regularly are late to appointments or you're putting off school assignments until the last minute. If you just do these, if you do these things, if you do one or two of these things, two or three of these things, you're probably always in a rush. Your problems and questions, and that's just that's just a few things. I think we have bought into the lie that busy means better. Now I'm not saying don't be focused. I'm not saying I'm not saying don't have goals, don't work hard. Trust me, I'm the guy that has a five year plan for my life. I'm not saying anything like that. But what I'm saying is, don't be so busy with doing a bunch of things that you never take time to see what God is doing in you and around you. Don't be so busy with the doing, doing, doing that you're not even recognizing what God is doing. Give your entire attention to what God is doing today. What God is doing today. Here, we see Philip. He's frantic. He's overcomplicating things. He's clearly frustrated. But the text says that Jesus knew what he was going to do and how he was going to do it, even when Philip did not know. Here's the thing. Jesus knows what he's doing even when we are uncertain, even when we don't know, even when we don't understand. Let's put it like this. Who in, who's, who in here watching, who watching is a planner. You love to plan. Like you're good at planning. You're administrative. You love to plan things out. Just type yes if you are a planner. I am not a planner, but I love a good plan, which makes my marriage to Aaron so rich because Aaron is a 
planner and I can follow along on her plans. I happen to marry an unofficial Disney vacation travel agent. You know, she's so good. Anytime Aaron and I go on vacation, an extended trip, she has a plan of what we're doing, how we're going to get there, what we need, what we're going to do when we get there, how we're going to get back, the whole deal. Good plans make things feel way better. Philip, in this story, seems like a planner. He seems like the planner. And if you're a planner and if someone throws something at you that's off the plan, you get a little upset. You get a little frantic. You get a little bothered. And he's probably thinking, if you would have told us, Jesus, before we left that we were going to feed these people, I could have whipped up some PB&J sandwiches. I could have called Jimmy John's and had a catering order set up. But you, but no, Jesus, you didn't tell us we were going to be feeding these people. Now we're in the middle of a problem without a plan. We're in the middle of a problem without a plan. And how many of you can relate to the feeling of being in the middle of a problem, being in the middle of an issue, and you feel like you have no plan. You feel like, how am I gonna get out of this? Maybe that's how 2020 has felt. Maybe you started the year with a list of plans, but it didn't go the way you thought. But did you know that even in the middle of your problem, Jesus still has a plan, and he knows what he's going to do in the middle in the middle of a divorce, in the middle of financial struggles, in the middle of your anxiety, in the middle of your heartbreak, in the middle of your hard classes, in the middle of a world crisis, Jesus still has a plan, even when you do not know the plan, even when you do not know it, especially if you don't know it. Just slow down and know that he is God. Just slow down. Be still. See, your biggest assignment in 2020 is not to be in control, but your biggest assignment in 2020 is to be still and know that he is God and he is good and he holds the victory and the victory belongs to him and we shall be still. You don't have to control everything. And here's the truth. You can't. You can't control everything. Stop burning time, draining your emotional and mental health with trying to win battles that aren't yours to fight. They're not yours to fight. Be slow and pay attention to what God is doing. Check this out. Verse 8 and 9 says this. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five loaves of bread and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Philip was stressing to find a solution to a problem, and the answer was right in front of him. And the answer was right in front of him. And I think we get so busy. We get so busy, man. We rush past so much stuff that we can miss the solution that's right in front of us. Maybe your solution isn't buying the latest and greatest this Christmas season, but it's appreciating what you have. Maybe instead of complaining about where you aren't in your life, you can start praising God for where you are and what he has brought you through. Instead of waiting, instead of wanting a second and third and fourth avenue of income, you can start being financially smart and generous with what you have now. Maybe you can start enjoying your spouse now. Maybe you can start enjoying your kids now. Maybe you can sleep slow down long enough that you can just maybe see in front of you that you have everything that God wants you to have. Maybe you can slow down for a moment to see that God wants to use what's right in your hand to perform a miracle. And my last, my last way to take back your year is this. Number three, take back your year by choosing joy. Take back your year by choosing joy. See, 2020 has been a wild ride. And if we are honest today, 
a lot of things that happened this year just sucked the joy right out of us. Sucked the joy right out of our lives. From the heartbreak of racial injustice, from the death toll of COVID-19, from good friends and family allowing Facebook arguments to separate them. And for you personally, you personally, you know the things that did not go how you wished or how you planned. It's funny, the other week, Aaron and I were reflecting on the plans that we started at the beginning of this year, primarily for the church, for City Lights. And, and then we looked at where we are now and how like, man, none of the plans that we wrote out came to pass. Like not, really not one, to, to be honest. It, and we had it all planned out and we were thinking, man, we were thinking, man, this time, this time, this year when we planned it, we were going to get ready for our in-person Christmas Eve services and we we're going to do all the Christmas of parties and all this stuff, but, we, but we're not able to do that. But the truth be told, though, the truth be told, we originally, Aaron and I originally weren't planning to have another baby until maybe sometime in 2021 or even 2022, and now... We're so excited for our son that's coming. We're so excited. Like we can't even picture life now without this. See, see, we were planning to do church in person, obviously, but online church, online church was not what we planned, but we've been able to reach people that we would not have been able to reach if it wasn't for online church. See, Aaron and I both in this season have had the opportunities as individuals to connect back to the heart of God and rediscover our passion for ministry. But even better than that, rediscover our passion for our family, our marriage, and our lives and, and, the, and the goals that God has for us, the plans that God has for us. See, it didn't go as planned, but I'm telling you this, you have two options. You have two options when things don't go the way you plan. You can complain and get upset and be mad and bitter or you can choose joy even in this season you can choose joy even in this season see what what we had to do and what I encourage you to do you're gonna have to say I'm gonna choose joy even in this pain I'm gonna choose joy even in this hurt even in this uncertainty even in this frustration even because things didn't go the way I want I'm gonna choose joy even in this and why can we choose joy why can we choose joy when things don't go the way we planned or hoped or, or, or wrote out? We can choose joy because we know that God so loved us that he gave his one and only son and Jesus lived a life we couldn't. He died a death we deserved. He rose again from the grave and he says, I give you life and life to the fullest. We can choose joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Strength. It's your strength, friend. It's your strength. Your plans, your plans are fragile, but Jesus is consistent. Your plans are conditional, but the love Jesus has for you is unconditional. Your plans may fall and fail, but Jesus holds the victory for your life. We can choose joy because we have hope. We have hope in the glory of Jesus Christ. The joy of the Lord is our strength. See, Andrew. The disciple Andrew's like, here, I got some bread and I have some fish, but how can that feed about 15,000 people that we see in front of us right now? And I love the response of Jesus. Calm, cool, and collect it. He says to them, his response to them was this in, in John 6.10, 6, have everyone sit down. I love it. It's gangster a little bit. It's gangster. He says, have everyone just sit down. Just have them sit down. Get start, start orchestrating the rows. Have everyone sit down. I love it because Jesus is like, sit back and watch what I'm about to do with what you give me and watch what I'm about to do with you. See, Jesus takes the bread. He blesses the bread. He breaks the bread and he gives it back to the disciples. And I want you to see this. Starting in verse 10, he gave it to the disciples to distribute to the people. Miraculously, the food multiplied with everyone eating as much as they wanted. 
I love that Jesus decided to perform this miracle by using his disciples. The bread did not multiply. Get this, I want you to get this. The bread did not multiply in Jesus' hands. The bread did not multiply in his hands. He, he, he took it, blessed it, broke it, gave it back to them. The bread did not multiply in his hands. The bread multiplied in the hands of the disciples. Jesus was standing on top of the mountain watching his disciples become miracle workers. Joy comes, get this, joy comes from knowing that even in hard times, in the hard times our world is facing, we are called to be a light to the world. Not a Facebook thug, not an over and opinionated person that just says what we feel and think or whatever, but would it be a light to a broken world? And joy comes from that. Isn't that what Christmas is all about? As we head to this December month and we get ready to celebrate the birth of Jesus, isn't that what Christmas is about? That God came to us, that he's Emmanuel, God with us, that God is not just in heaven somewhere looking down on us, but God is involved, God is intimate, and God chooses to use us as his vehicle of choice to change the world. He's still God with us, he's still God with you, even when the world is troubled, even when things didn't go as planned, even when there's heartbreak and hardship, he's still God with you. He's with you. He's Emmanuel. He's Jesus and he's for you. So you can take back this year refusing to post negative things on your social media. Instead, as a follower of Jesus, you can post some light and hope to our world. Use your platform as a way to promote joy. Choosing joy by being intentional with your time, intentional with your family, Intentional with your friends, intentional with God in your health. Choose joy by slowing down long enough to see that God is at work in your life, even in this, even in this thing. He's at work. And lastly, lastly, when everyone was satisfied, scripture says, Jesus told his disciples, now go back and gather up the pieces left over so that nothing will be wasted. Nothing is wasted, friends. The disciples filled up the 12 baskets of fragments, a basket of leftovers for each disciple. <laughs> Isn't it good to know that you can choose joy by knowing that God looks out for you all the time. Emmanuel, God with us, God with you. So how are you gonna take back your year? I'm looking right at you right now. Lean in, lean in right now. How are you gonna take back your year? How are you gonna finish this year? God is for you and not against you. So Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your favor. We thank you that you are with us. That you're still with us, even in our hurt, even in our pain. I feel like there's some people, your anxiety has been through the roof. And God is saying he's been with you every step of the way. He's God with you. Even in that. Even in that. Mm, I didn't feel that spirit of excuse. Well, I can't do this. Oh, I'm going to wait to the new year to start this. And I was like the Holy Spirit saying, nope, 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 nope. Today. Today. Today is time to get your heart straight with the Lord. Today is the day to start living your best life right now. It's today. Don't wait for tomorrow. The script, the scriptures tell us, for we do not know what tomorrow will bring. We are just a mist that is here today and gone tomorrow. So what are you gonna do with your day today? Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. We want more of you. So Father, help us take back 2020. Help us to live this last month with all that we got, given our entire attention to you today. We love you and we need you. In Jesus' name, amen.